Hey everyone, Michael from Xano here. I wanted to go ahead and uh, actually make something uh, that is a common use case for you a lot easier with a snippet. And this is just going to be the uh, accompanying tutorial uh, just to help you work through this snippet. So it's going to be uh, how to do email verification. And the reason I have Magic Link with SendGrid open on the screen is because uh, typically we just send users uh, to this extension because you can just manipulate a few things in order to create that logic. Um, so the first thing you're going to want to do is, or actually you won't have to because you'll have a snippet to unclick install. Um, but I do have this open because you will need to configure uh, those environment variables that typically come with the extension. They'll come with the snippet. I'll go ahead and jump to my settings here and um, just talk about what they are. Um, you can watch the SendGrid um, or Magic Link with SendGrid extension to learn how to actually populate these. And there's also instructions on that extension page. Um, but you'll need your from email uh, from SendGrid, your API key. You'll need a redirect URI. And this is basically a URL from your front end where your users will land after clicking the link that verifies their email. You'll have to uh, generate a magic JWT secret and put in here. This is for the uh, encoding and decoding of that token in the magic link. Um, and then a SendGrid template. And because we're going to use a dynamic um, SendGrid send, that includes that link. And then an expiration time, which is fully customizable. This is just going to be for how long that link uh, you send to your user where they can verify that email is good for. Um, Typically, we just default it at 3,600 seconds, which is an hour. You could do more, you could do less. Um, yeah, so when we first jump to the database, I just want to point out a few things I've done on the user table. Make sure this is here. Um, uh, I renamed the magic link object just magic verify, but it still has a token, that expiration time, and a Boolean for when that gets used. And then I have another Boolean that I added, which is just called verify. Uh, so when the user actually verifies their email address, this Boolean will get set to true. And then if you choose to use that logic um, in your other API endpoints, just to confirm their email has been verified uh, before they can maybe trigger some logic, then you have that. Um, I'll go ahead and also demo this. I created a little um, mock front end uh, using Bubble, so you can kind of see all this live in action. But let's jump to the API. Rename this uh, Magic Link API group, uh, Magic Link plus email verification, and I'll just include um, really just these bottom three endpoints for you guys. Um, but you'll notice uh, typical Magic Link uh, has this logic, so it's just maybe a user already exists, they put in their email address, they get a Magic Link um, created, and then it gets sent via SendGrid. So for this idea, we typically want the user to verify their email once they sign up. So I created this on the sign up endpoint, and I basically created um, or added those three functions here. Now, just that logic for the magic link request uh, API endpoint here at the bottom. So once the user signs up, they put in their name, email, password, it, uh, it checks to make sure the user doesn't already exist, then it adds the user. And then it's going to go ahead and generate that magic link. And you can go through and look at all that logic by clicking there. And then it's going to use the SendGrid dynamic send um, and actually go ahead and send that magic link. And if I go ahead and just open SendGrid very quickly, um, I have just a very basic email set up here, but it accomplishes the goal. And it's essentially the same thing from the magic link template, but I just changed the text here to say, please click here to verify uh, your email address. So they'll get sent this email, um, and in there will be that redirect URI to your app, and also a token parameter, which includes the magic token, which um, when they land on back on that redirect URI page on your front end, they'll hit this verify email magic login. Your front end will need to parse that magic, or that magic token from uh, the URL, and then it'll go through all this logic. Um, if everything looks good, all these checks and preconditions, um, the user will get a authentication token generated and then the user record will be updated. We'll go ahead and update the verified Boolean to true. And then we'll also, um, update the, uh, used Boolean of that magic verify link 
to true. Uh, so with all that, let's go ahead um, and I'll sort of jump to bubble now and uh, talk through uh, what I have set up. So first, let's jump to plugins and I'll just, this API connector. Um, basically all you need to know here is that we set up the verify email signup and then also the um, verify email magic login. And then we're gonna do an auth name. So uh, that'll just be able to show us that we actually can use that token that came back and we're actually authenticated. So let's go ahead um, and just preview this and I'll show you the flow here. So I'll go ahead and I'll create myself as a new user. You know, I actually need an email address where I can receive that uh, magic token. We'll just say test three, four, five. I'll hit sign up. So when I do that, that will trigger that API call. And I have myself navigating to a page where I say, okay, sign up successful, but please go check your email um, to continue. So I'm not letting the user actually um, continue to my app in this case until they've actually verified their email, right? So now if I go check my email, I hit refresh. Here's my dynamic send grid email. Uh, you can see here's the link. So when I select this, it should open up a new tab. Um, you can see here my access bar maybe, that here is my front end URI, this is my re redirect URI, and then I have question mark token equals. So there is that parameter um, that actually needs to be parsed and exchanged. Um, so now I have that token and now I can actually continue to the app. When I do that, I'll pass the token to the uh, my front end and I'll be able to see my actual uh, details. So you can see here's that name and email I used uh, in the signup process. Uh, so uh, with that, I'll go ahead and create this snippet and include it in the video description. And you can go ahead and uh, just one click sign up and actually uh, use this uh, in your backend.